Welcome to another edition of How to Build Lifetime Cash Flow Through Real Estate Investing. I'm Rod Cleef, and I'm thrilled you're here. And I know you're going to get tremendous value from the two gentlemen we're interviewing today. Now, their names are Joe Killinger and George Pino, and uh, they are with the therrd.com. And uh, we're going to dig into what they do and why they do it and where they come from. Welcome to the show, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Absolutely. So, you know, maybe each of you can independently talk about how, how you got into the multifamily space, what you've done, and, and uh, maybe why you love it. Go ahead. Absolutely. Um, this is George uh, Pino speaking, and uh, I've been in real estate now for ooh, 31 years. And when I originally got started in, I was actually doing uh, brokerage and real estate auctions. And then uh, we started, uh, I became business partners with Joe uh, back in 1993. And uh, shortly thereafter, we started to uh, purchase and acquire multifamily assets. And of course, all we could afford was uh, uh, really class B, class C assets in low income neighborhoods. Uh, you know, we were in our 20s starting to invest in Los Angeles. Wow, uh, that's an expensive property. market. It's an expensive market to get started in, absolutely. Right. And, uh, you know, so a lot of what we did, uh, you know, going into smaller uh, real estate assets, uh, you know, small apartment buildings, uh, purchasing our first six unit, then a 10 unit, and then growing that into a 28, uh, then a 23, then a 52 unit, and, and kept growing. All um, in LA. Yes. All in Los Angeles. And then wow. we actually started to uh, expand into Texas when the LA market got a little tough. One of the, you know one of the things that we did was we were always cash flow buyers, and when the uh, uh, the returns on the Los Angeles market were just pushing a little too uh, high, uh, too low rather, or the prices were too high, we ended up looking at some uh, other markets that we had some experience in, and we started purchasing in the Dallas uh, Texas submarket and opening an office there as well. Okay. So um, you know that's kind of our, our, what we did, we, you know, we actually created a socially responsible real estate investment company back before that term was popular oh. or even around back in 2000. And, uh, what does you that know, mean that, exactly? A socially called. responsible real estate company. I, you know what? We didn't even call it that. Um, <laughs> it, it was, tagged it, that. it was, uh, ended up being tagged that, um, by a professor in Arizona who had, uh, started a, whole socially responsible real estate investing uh, forum. And uh, we were actually asked, we were, it was great. We were asked to be part of that forum and uh, uh, speak on their behalf. We were able to speak in uh, after the hurricane Katrina, as well as in New York and a few things um, about how real estate investors can actually increase their cash flow or, or income by, by doing the right thing as well, by I just socially responsible investing. So, uh, so, so this is, this is, you know, offering affordable solutions or, or is it more philanthropic or what is it? No, no. Um, our socially responsible investment company was called Learning Link Centers. And what we did was the business model um, came from Joe, actually. Um, Joe's from a small town in Nebraska, about 281 people. <laughs> and uh, when he was growing up, he had, uh, you know, he, he, whenever he needed help on any kind of education or math, he would go out to and just literally knock on the door of his school teacher um, and talk to them after school. And we thought, how can we replicate that? So the learning links model um, that uh, Joe came up with is we would take a unit off the market um, uh, or percent, uh, a unit off the market, convert it into a, um, convert it into what we call a resource center with computer, internet service, mini library, books and games. We'd also discount a percentage of the units in that uh, uh, building and then um, bring in accredited school teachers who would then tutor the kids that live in the building uh, four days a week for two and a half hours a day. Wow. Very, very cool. Very. Well, originally, very cool. it was just meant to be kind of philanthropic. Um, yeah, no, yeah, absolutely. What it turned out to be is as we, as we learned, um, it's our, all, the kids, instead of being out tearing around the property, doing damage, breaking windows, things like that, they would be in the resource rooms. We had less damage that we had to deal with, less broken windows, um, less, you know, all kinds of, yeah. and our units stayed full. Sure. People, the families wanted to have the free tutoring after school. And so it really yeah. worked out a lot different than we were expecting and it worked out very well. 
Oh, and, I, I can and, totally see it. I, I mean, yeah. you know, and, and I, I preach this to my students in my live events. It's, you know, what you give, you get back. And here's a fantastic right. example of that. Well, yeah. my hat's off to you guys. You know, I, I didn't quite, I read your bio, Joe, and I didn't quite get what it is you did. And uh, yeah, very impressive. I actually got goosebumps. I freaking love that, man. That's <laughs> absolutely awesome. What an incredible way yeah. to add value. Okay. Yeah, well, we didn't expect to add value. Yeah, it, was just, kind of, uh, it was actually a shock. It was, uh, you know, it, it was amazing watching some of the tenants actually take almost a home ownership approach where they felt this is now a home. They didn't move out. Um, we're, you know, when we first created the model, we were in one of the highest attrition areas in the uh, Los Angeles and one of the worst neighborhoods. Wow. And all of a sudden we went to, you know, our make ready costs jumped almost to zero. Wow. Um, because no one moved out. Wow. And you guys, those of you listening, there's, that's the most expensive expense you have is your turnover costs. So yeah. you know, what, what, an, what an incredible solution to that. And, and, you know, that's just doing the right thing. Love it. Absolutely yeah. freaking love it. So now, now, now here we are, how many thousands of units later? No, we haven't well, been buying in some for a while now. We have okay. uh, our problem. Here was the problem that we had. It worked well in that nobody would move out of the properties. I mean, okay. they it stabilized this community. It used to have such a high turnover. Right. So uh, when we had investors on this, well, after we are on seven, year seven, I guess it was, uh, we had no students left because they'd moved through ah. the program and they moved on to, and we have a nonprofit education advantage foundation that does, gives them scholarships to get them on to higher education. Nice. A lot of them took that option and they went on to higher education and they're prof professionals and working in the fields now, but that we had nobody showing up to the resource room. Yeah. So the investors came back, said, okay, let's, let's do this again. And so we sold those buildings. We've owned properties in, uh, and we're buying properties in other, other states yeah. right now. Uh, Southern California has been a little bit tight for multifamily. Oh, oh, it's nuts. <laughs> yeah. Nuts might be a more operative okay, word. We can go with nuts, but yeah, <laughs> Dallas. it's been tough. No, but, uh, we don't like to speculate at all. So, um, right. I mean, everything is all cash flow driven for our investments right. first and foremost. And then we look for ways to actually create value for our yields to increase the yields and increase the... Um, uh, yeah, we're going to dig into that. I, we we chatted about that before we turned the recorder on and we're going to dig into that for sure. Now, I, is, correct me if I'm wrong. Didn't I read one of you has been involved in like close to a half a billion dollars in transactions though. Was that as a broker or? Broker, as a broker. broker. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Well, so let's, 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 let's drill down a little bit because I know you guys have done a lot of business. Let's talk about pro uh, evaluation first. Let's talk about, you know, you're, you're looking at properties. I know you guys can add some value to my listeners as to, you know, some, some high level, some high level things to, to consider when they're evaluating a property. It's the most critical thing right off the bat. Once you know the asset class you want, you need to know how to put a value on it. Right. And, you know, uh, and this is George's real strength <coughs> is evaluation. So um, I'll let you speak to that. Too. Okay. Um, you know, initially, and, and it's interesting because even from the brokerage side of things, as well as from my investment side, you know, I, I get asked this quite often. And, you know, on the very high level, it boils down to that old adage, old saying, you know, location, location, location. Right. Um, that being said, um, at the same time, you want to look at, you know, I've always been a, uh, because I'm a little bit more conservative, I always look for a cash flow evaluation first and foremost, and then going into evaluate the actual returns, um, looking at the uh, profit and losses for the last 12 months and 24 months, preferably, mm -hmm. and month by month looking for something that's outstanding, what's wrong, what anomalies. might be a little too high, uh, anomalies, understanding what the norm is, and then looking for those anomalies, mm -hmm. and then uh, realizing, well, here's what the cash flow is, or here's what the real cash flow is, um, building in actual uh, forecasting. The next step would be to build in a forecast for the next, um, for your investment term, for the next whether it's one year, three year, five year, 10 years, but also building into that um, reserve, uh, you know, reserves. When you do your due diligence on the property, you wanna make sure you do a, what we call a reserve study analysis, where you're actually looking at the major components of the building, what's it gonna to cost to replace it and roughly when, and then put aside those reserves, because that does impact cash flow. Um, so we take a look at all of that, and then from that, we then look at how can I now create value? Um, I know. Right. Let me back, let me stop for one second. So, guys, you know when he's talking about creating reserves, uh, 
you know, the larger, when you get into agency debt, they'll actually require it, okay? But, but it, you know, it's something you should do even if you buy a duplex, okay? You need to take a look at, at, at when you can expect the life of the, of the roof to go out, the, 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 the systems, the, you know, the parking lot, the, you know, uh, all, all, the different thing, all the different components that wear out and you, and you, you uh, put some money aside for that eventuality so you don't get hit. Don't get hit. And again, you know, you get into larger loans with banks and, and, and agency debt and they're going to require it anyway. So anyway, mm -hmm. sorry, please continue. Oh. No, no. So, and then um, as part of it as well, we start looking at, uh, you know, the lease rates of the properties, the units, um, comparative comparables that are in the area. What is actually being leased? Um, be aware that, you know, some landlords may never, they never think to, especially the smaller landlords, never think to increase their rents. They just have, uh, they, they, the tenant's been there for 10, 15 years and they're paying way below market rate rents. Right. Um, be aware. Well, they're afraid they're gonna leave. Or they're afraid they're gonna leave. And, and right, well that's they, usually the reason. You know, they, they don't wanna deal with the hassle of having to re-let the property. Yes. They'll just take a less, they'll take less income uh, and, and leave it alone, right. And I don't think they realize the damage that does to the, pro the asset, the value of the asset. Oh, well, sure, sure, yeah. sure. So, but also we have to be aware when you're evaluating um, the local municipalities and the laws, meaning if you're looking at a, a, an asset that looks like a great deal because you can raise the rents tremendously, but you're in a rent control neighborhood. Right. Such as Los Angeles, San Francisco, New York, or a myriad of other small areas. Mm -hmm. um, you have to be aware of that. So sure. you really need to understand as a landlord coming in, what are your options? What can I do for this property? Um, what what terms of the lease do I inherit or the rental agreement that I inherit and what terms can I change? Right. So, right. Let me, let me interject one thing here, guys, whatever market you're in, you better know the landlord tenant laws, period. Even if you're not in a rent control market, you know, talk to an eviction attorney. There's usually one, one guy in every market that does lots of evictions. They're a great resource. Mm -hmm. You know, there's nothing more painful than to go to eviction court and see that landlord that doesn't know what he's doing and have the judge uh, gleefully tell them they have to start all over again. Um, so, so know the landlord tenant laws, know what you can do and also know what you can't do from a discrimination standpoint as well. So just educate yourself. I just want to interject as you're going through this because you're going through it quick, but it's great content. Okay. Keep going. Absolutely. So that's, um, you know, from there, uh, once you under, have an understanding of what your rental rates should be, as well as what your expenses should be, um, then you can actually get an idea as far as, well, here are my projections, here's what I want to do. Um, and then you can actually then compare it. You know, a lot of times when ta someone talks about evaluations, um, you know, they look at things from cost per unit versus uh, or they may call it cost per door. Don't cost be per square foot, and, and right. it's irrelevant. It's, it's yeah. how, how well does it cash flow? Ab absolutely. Right. And, and also, brokers will use that a lot of times to make a property look better. For instance, you know, they'll say a cost per unit or cost per door is really low, but they're com they may be comparing a property that's all studios to one that's all two bedrooms. Yeah. And of course, the cost per unit is going to be lower. Right. Um, so be aware of that and be aware of what actually is the pro forma and what's the current and then you can then create a real evaluation understand what uh you know i, I we love using cap rates in our business because i think uh looking at a uh, the net operating income versus the sales price is one of the best ways to determine the value a true value of a property versus a cost per square foot cost per door cost per unit or anything else great because it utilizes the net income versus absolutely right these absolutely. other things right okay Okay. You know, and even the numbers, if they're going out to the brokerage community, they want to make sure the numbers that they're looking at are real numbers, not projected income. Oh yeah. Sometimes yeah. That's, that's the thing you get, you get the pro forma from these guys and it's 90, 95% of the package is pro forma, which yeah. for most practical purposes is toilet paper and you've got to work it yourself and you, you really need actuals. You need to know yeah. what the property has done. And well, not just toilet paper, it's rough toilet paper. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Really, you know, right. we, we get a good number of calls in the office saying, hey, I bought this property and you can just see that they, they went off and performed. Yeah, you know, I, I tell my students, I know, I know, I think it was you, George, that's got the auction background. I tell them, listen, you know, a great place to learn is auctions because 
usually those packages are, are more complete. You'll get more information uh, because they know that you've got to do all your due diligence before the auction date. If you're the high bidder at the auction, it's your deal or you lose big money. So, you know, sometimes that's a better place to learn. I tell people, you know, register on all the auction sites. And I know you were in some of the big ones. Uh, but, uh, uh, but yeah, okay. So, so uh, look, at, look at real historical financial data versus unit cost versus square footage cost. Um, um, and then create your own performer. <laughs> create your own pro forma. And, and, and guys, you really have to take a hard look at the expenses as well, especially on smaller properties. You know, you, a lot of the properties, won't, you know, the owner is handling the management. You've got to bring the management in. You've got to make sure you up, you know, up the taxes because they're going to go up when you buy the property and, and, and make sure you've got real numbers in there for repairs and maintenance and things. It's called normalizing the expenses. And, you know, I, I, I did a Facebook live post on this guy. So you, if you go to the big multifamily group and look for that, uh, you'll be, you'll be able to see, we've got, a, I think we've got a spreadsheet there that lists um, some, some averages, but anyway, so please continue. So that's evaluation. Um, uh, was there anything else in that regard or should we move on to the next one? No, I, I think that's a pretty good high level uh, overlook of what they should be aware of and, and look for. Um, awesome. Awesome. Getting into metrics. Yeah. Awesome. Well, let's let's talk about uh, let's talk about tenant screening. Uh, I, I know you guys are experts in that. Uh, let's let's talk about why that's so important and and some some tips that you might be able to give my listeners. Well, first thing, I mean, as your tenants come in, you really want them finding the right tenant is the key. You get the wrong tenant in, you know, 60, 90 to 100 days down the road, you're evicting them. Now you got to turn that unit again. You've got a vacant unit. Mm -hmm. So finding the right tenant screening company that gets you the reports that you want. You don't necessarily, don't just, <coughs> don't just go to companies that offer tenant screening, know the reports that you want. And then because a examples. lot of them. Give some examples of, of, of the types of reports that a person should look for. Okay. Yeah. Well, um, one of the things that we learned is that a credit report doesn't really tell you that if a tenant's going to be a good tenant or not. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All it does is tell you if they have the financial wherewithal and if they've, paid their credit card bills. Um, the dirty secret, I Background. think, uh, the, yeah, the dirty little secret, I think, overall within the landlord-tenant <laughs> eviction policy, I mean, the average eviction across the United States is a little bit over $7,000 cost to a landlord. That includes attorney's fees, lost income, turnover, um, and turnover costs, mm -hmm. and then finding a new tenant. Mm -hmm. So, it can be very expensive having to evict an a tenant. So, the problem is many of the municipalities, especially the larger ones, actually seal eviction records. So without having access to those, there or either that or if it if they may go to a uh, eviction court as part of the negotiation to get them out, the attorney may agree to seal the record. Um, and in which case, sealed record, there's no judgment, there's no nothing of record. So no way to know they they no were a flake know. in the past, right? Absolutely. So you want to look at, uh, and there's a couple systems out there that actually track eviction records um, as far or, or, or rental payment history. Um, but what we run, in addition to uh, tenants, uh, to our typical credit report, because the credit report does tell you some of the stuff. You know, sure, sure. Um, but we also run, uh, you know, and, and this was a hard lesson learned um, investing in C neighborhoods, mm -hmm. um, wanting, you know, we, we started running criminal background checks, but also social security number ID verification checks wow. to make sure that the uh, social security number so is real. issued and right. real, uh, actually issued because you can create a fake one and then create a history behind it. Wow. Um, and, uh, and then from there, we also run um, a uh, eviction liens and judgment search because uh, a lot of times it doesn't pull up on a credit report, but you have a separate right. through the counties and, 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 and states. Um, and then uh, there's also a myriad of others as far as uh, national criminal. Um, you can do a sex offender database search, um, mm -hmm. depending on what you as a landlord set as your guidelines um, that are, that are uh, HUD compliant. Right. And, and so, you know, there's, all types of different um, uh, reports, but what you want to do is make sure that what you are looking for for your tenant, uh, or to for who your tenant wa you want your tenant to be, complies with that. And the best way to do that is actually doing the screening reports, but also not just the reports. Don't rely on paper. Um, one of the biggest things that we learned early on was 
verify everything as well. Pick up the um, phone. Pick up the phone. Pick up the phone. Um, because yeah. you know, and and ninety nine percent of the people are going to tell the truth on the application, but it's that one percent that may not or does not do that. And we've we've actually been guest speakers at uh, many uh, uh, police organizations about how to identify uh, potential problem tenants. Um, really, you know, in in neighboring areas. Well, Absolutely. I'd love, love to hear. I'd love to hear some some tips there. And, and so, just to recap, credit report criminal check, maybe a national criminal check, FED eviction judgment check, a sex offender check. I mean, that's quite, that's a lot. And, and, and that's, that's a lot of things that you, you really should be looking at. Um, so that's pretty comprehensive. Yeah. You really want to, on these reports, I mean, there's a lot of companies out there that will just, you know, they'll, they're selling you, if you're going to go for the cheap report, you're going to get a back, a, a public records report is what you're going to get. You want to find okay. a good, reputable company that is nationwide that you can really work with. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so uh, what are you, 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 you alluded to some tips that the police department mentioned. Do you, can you, can you share any of those? Are you gonna- uh, absolutely. Um, okay. You know, some of the stuff that we've, uh, you know, you, you always look for the person, you know, the, the number one red flag, I need to move tomorrow. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's usually somebody that's either being evicted or that has some sort of issue going on that they have to kind of escape and run out. Um, Number two is we look at someone who's more interested in ease of access for the unit versus the actual unit. Um, Meaning, um, you know, I I alluded or mentioned before that the property that we, uh, one of the the first properties that we did for learning link centers was actually in a pretty rough neighborhood. And frankly, it was actually gang infested in one of the worst drug neighborhoods in the, in the uh, uh, LA County area. It would be nice when you said it was a C area. Yeah, uh, I, <laughs> no, absolutely. When we actually drove up to our uh, uh, third building that we bought there, there were a whole bunch of gang members hanging out front and they started flashing us gang signs. Yeah. It might be run. a little further on in the alphabet, that area. Yeah, that yeah. they, they usually run off. But but we worked with the police department to actually create methodologies. You know, as someone who's looking that's more interested about, oh, is the window facing the alley or street so that I might be able to do something and, and do some business, know, sell something, do some yeah. business right. versus is this apartment really work for me? Right. And if they want yeah. to pay cash, That's interesting. if cash is always a problem. Oh yeah. 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 For sure. Yeah. yeah. I had, I had a property where the, they cut a hole in the front door so they could pass the stuff. Oh, pass it through. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I by the way, I heard a great story. My, my friend Maureen Maz, I love this. I just got to share it since we're on the topic. She had a problem, a drug problem in one of her apartment complexes in Atlanta and she g- connected with the police department and, um, she, she, she couldn't get these guys out. She knew she could get them out in about a month, but she wanted them out sooner. So she passed a flyer out that they were going to uh, test the, their, they were going to train their drug sniffing dogs. And she was volunteering her property for doing that. It's yeah. just freaking awesome. <laughs> okay, that's brilliant. That's brilliant. Know, is that awesome? I love that. Just yeah. To share. yeah. yeah but, right. a- anything else that you guys got from the cops or is that pretty much wrapped that? You know, the, the uh, crime watch meetings, you know, it's, it's good to attend those. You really yeah. should be attending those. Right. Um, you know, just, and don't, you know, a lot of times people go to these crime watch meetings and they tell about people that have skipped or done damage and people write it down. You got to be careful with that. Yeah. You know, that you, you're creating a blacklist and you don't want to do that. Interesting. You know? Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Well, and, and a lot of times actually the, the last thing also is a, uh, what we call a proxy renter where believe it or not, a lot of the gang members or criminals would actually have their girlfriend or somebody else. Yeah, mm-hmm. rent yeah. for them. I, a college student. So, so mm-hmm. that's where you actually verify and you start contacting the employers, employment. Um, I mean, it, it was so bad and we didn't realize how bad it was. This was probably about uh, a year or so after we really started investing in the neighborhoods. One of our managers was um, going through and they had verified employment, everything. And she decided, you know, the person works right around the street. They had actually verified the employment, calling the employer. Wow. Wow. Uh, and they, they said, I, you know, the person works just around the corner. Um, you know, I'll let them know that they were approved, approved. Right. He went to the uh, place of work and lo and behold, it's a vacant <laughs> space. There's wow. not even a business there. Wow. And, uh, she called them on it and was like, I just wanted to verify your you know, uh, address. And they're like, Oh yes, it's this address. They said, Oh, I was just there. 
and I went to actually tell you you're, that you, we're going to approve you. Click. Uh huh. Yeah, Hung wow. up. Never heard from them ever again. Wow. Those you are know, those another stories. thing. Another thing yeah. is make sure you when you run a report that you actually get the report. I mean, it's don't trust a tenant to bring you a report. Oh yeah. Because you can yeah. go online. You, you can take your average eleven year old and say, hey. This is what a report looks like. Can you create one for me? Sure, sure, and they'll be able sure. to do it. And they'll bring that in. You're going to have the have. Oh, oh, yeah. They'll, they'll say, hey, by the way, I just got this from another property. Yep. So you yeah. save you Can some money. Here. here you go. Yeah, don't. Yeah, very. That's very good advice. Yeah, very yeah. Good. we've seen that. And we're because wow. yeah, you can create a headache. Yeah. yeah, I mean, there's some sophisticated professional, you know, tenants out there. And guys, don't, on, don't underestimate how important knowing what you can and can't do discrimination wise as well, because there are a lot more protected classes now than there ever were, especially in places like California. You know, you just really need to be up to speed on that. Okay. Well, let's shift gears. Let's talk about how you guys, uh, you know, ways to add value to a property. Uh, let's talk about some, some ideas that you might have there. Okay. Uh, lo I love the, you know, love, just freaking love you the, the whole, you know, uh, classroom idea or, or whatever you call it, resource center idea. That's freaking brilliant. Yeah. It's, there's a lot of easy things you can take a look at. One is your laundry room. If there's laundry on place, see if there's a contract. You know, if it's about ready to be up, put your own own uh, laundry equipment in and get a good, you know. And yeah, and now laundry equipment, you can swipe too. You don't need to do the yeah. coins anymore. No it's coins. all with, with cards and debit cards and everything mm -hmm. else. So it's just goes right into the bank account. I mean, it's beautiful. Yeah. yeah and you don't have the damage. Right. Uh, you know, people aren't breaking into it. Another right. thing that, you know, something that we did, uh, we had a, a good sized property. We had a 400, it was 400 units. 392. 392 units, actually. <laughs> and uh, so 392 units, and it was just, it was on four acres or something no, like nine that. Nine and a half. Okay, nine and a half acres, huh? <laughs> So I I now, I know, the who's the, who's, yeah. now I, I know who's the analytical who's the analyst and who's the yeah. who's the in, in every team there's always the the analytical one and yeah, the, yeah got it. Well, okay, I'm the guy that takes good, took care of the maintenance on the property. So yeah, I was out there swinging the hammer while he was in the office in the air conditioning. Right, so, but it works out well. Um, <laughs> but uh, uh, carports, there was no carports anywhere. So we did. We took about a third in. of the yeah. units, and it would cost us seven hundred and fifty dollars. Yep. Per, 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 per carport? Dollars to build a carport. Per carport, yeah. Yeah, and then we leased those out at a premium. Yeah, we and did. Yep. That added a... a sure, year. sure. You put a multiple on that on the NOI, and, and, and you can instantly see what a great deal that is. Yeah, and, absolutely. Yeah, the, I, I think the numbers worked out where it was seven fifty a unit uh, per carport. Um, and, you know, obviously there's no maintenance necessarily on a carport. Right. So 100% of the income that you Going generate right to the bottom line. right to the bottom line. Yep. It averaged uh, with the current cap rates in the area, increased the value of the property about $3,000 per carport. Per carport. Okay, so, guys. So you got that. So, so you understand that any increase, and you guys know this, but any increase to the NOI is an exponential increase to the value. And there's a great example of it. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah. You know, okay. another big one that we've really hit a home run with is just a, um, a colored wall. You know, a if you colored have, wall. Yeah, if you want to have accent, accent wall. If you want to have an accent wall in your unit. You want inside, to have a, inside yeah. wall. You mean one wall, wall. one wall, the living room is this different color. Yep, you want to have for an extra $10 a month, $15 a month, we're going to paint your wall for you, and it'll be. And well, so that added seriously? a lot. Seriously, yeah. yeah. believe it or not, yeah. People wanted to have that extra. Wow. It made their apartment stand out different. And we you know we we gave them like ten or I think it was eight different colors, and to choose from, and we had it. And so we just. But it's a monthly upcharge. It's not a one-time upcharge. It's monthly, yeah. but it's a small upcharge that they don't really. Yeah, it's not know, that big of a deal. deal monthly. Five, anywhere from five to ten dollars, and the wow. person's like, "Oh, wow, it looks great," you know, and uh, they end up going that route. Yeah. Wow. Just, yeah, and it worked out. I have them. not heard that one before. I love it. That's good. Oh, yeah, the, um, so like a lot of them would be like if there was a fireplace or there was something they'd want to paint around it, around mm -hmm. a mantle, and they would pay extra for it. Wow. Yeah, it's just nice. a nice offering. Yeah, no, that's that's great. Yeah. yeah. And then um, one of the other key things I think is really keeping up to date with the current market trends and what's happening. You know, we attend a lot of uh, – um, just to see new products and stuff. We attend a lot of the uh, industry, uh, you know, the, the apartment association stuff, uh, um, the, just what's going on in the market. Like for instance, um, the millennials right now, they don't cook as often. They go out a lot. 
um, or they have food delivered. So you don't really have a big use of uh, dishwashers. Interesting. Um, however, they would pay extra 25 to $50 a month extra to have a washer and dryer in the unit. So hmm. LG makes an act and uh, and uh, make, makes a great product that's out there that we've tested out that is actually a washer dryer combined unit that works under counter <laughs> and it, it fits exactly in the size of a dishwasher. Wow! So you and it costs about a thousand dollars, but if you can get twenty five to fifty dollars extra a month for that, you're Cap rate basis Forget as it. well as the Forget increase yeah. And, and yeah and and the payoff is astronomical. So, wow, um, so It's keeping up with the trends. What's going on there to keep your property really um, uh, uh, up to speed with what is. And, and your you could ask that, I suppose. I suppose you could ask that when they're moving in, what they'd prefer. Exactly. In that Absolutely. Job. Absolutely. And say, you know, if you want your own washer and dryer in, in the unit, it'll be an extra, you know, 35, right. 40, $50, um, whatever you, you can get from them, so to speak. Wow. Um, the other thing that we also do is we look at on our make ready costs. We don't do it when we first come in, but um, we tend to be long-term holders. Right. So we look at how we can reduce the make ready costs, um, especially in class C, we assets where you have a lot more wear and tear. So, you know, we'll put in uh, hard surface flooring. Yeah, always. Um, mm -hmm. You know, laminate flooring uh, mm -hmm. or even some of the new vinyl plank flooring is fantastic. Yeah. Plank is huge um, right now and looks yeah. looks like wood, really good looking stuff. A lot of that people. Really so, well. um, we, uh, we typically go in and, re um, you know, as opposed to having Formica countertops um, that can burn, we'll actually put in, uh, not resurface, we'll actually tile them out. Tile them, um, okay. And in some cases, uh, some of the buildings, we actually were able to uh, work out some amazing deals for prefab granite um, that wasn't that much. Like, like remnants or st uh, stuff like that? Uh, or? Essentially, yes. You know, oh, uh, wait a minute, prefab. 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 What I mean oh. is, uh, yeah, they, these were actually um, kind of, uh, there was an 82-unit building in Los Angeles. Okay. Um, and we ended up going in and literally – here's all the kitchens, here's the sizes. And we bought up, uh, we found a place that could, that had the perfect prefab size. It was only, um, I think, uh, roughly $350 per countertop. Wow. And it was drop in, you know, so whenever someone came out, we plug and play, plug and play it. We'd so, it so, so this was like a bulk purchase. So you just did your homework yes. and, 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 yeah, that's, that's guys, that's, it, it, you buy, if, when you buy a property, even if you're just buying an appliance package, if you can buy in, in bulk, you know, 10, 10 at a time, it makes a huge difference and you have to shop it. Uh, yeah, so you just did the homework. I, I you know, that's yeah. fantastic. A absolutely. And you can, you can get those bulk rates, uh, like you said, with 10 units, uh, uh, you know, 10 packages, but you can also get them directly from like companies like Lowe's or uh, as opposed to directly from the manufacturer. Um, you know, one of the properties that uh, we had that uh, we're just uh, one of the larger ones, we did a complete refurb on all the units. Um, you know, we bought uh, about 270 appliance packages and from Lowe's and it was cheaper than what we could have got from the actual. No kidding. Wow. And, because of you know, their bulk because of their bulk purchasing abilities. Wow. Absolutely. I mean, I, th I think we paid, uh, it was $1,100 for a refrigerator, microwave, stove, and dishwasher. Well, that wow. was Now, this years, was, this was seven, six, seven, seven years, years ago. ago. Yeah, but, yeah. But still, uh, you know, and these were all black appliances. Uh, nice. You know, they weren't the stainless steel, but they were all black. So it was a little bit of more of an upgrade. And, 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 you know, I got to tell you, I just had a big mastermind at my house a couple months ago, and I had about a billion dollars in assets here. And, and it's interesting. I thought everybody was going stainless, but there are some areas that, that still prefer black, believe it or not. Yeah. And so, you know, you need to know what your area, you know, what, 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 the, what the demand is for, for the type mm -hmm. of uh, fixtures and, and not fixtures, uh, appliances, but, but same thing, like, like you were referencing millennials, you know, uh, cater to the demographic and you're going to be much more successful, yeah. which is a great segue into, the, did you have anything else? Because I was going to segue. No, I, okay. I did have one thing that I think we, you know, we're looking at ways to add value. Right. But you think, you know, we find with, especially with newer investors, walk your property, oh, get yeah. into those units. The, the, you got the to drips, the water drips, the, you know, that adds up, get the low flow in place, 
That's key because that water bill can eat you alive. Yep. yep. Get in those yep. units, check the faucets, make sure if you have a, a irrigation system for your landscaping, make sure there's no leaks. Yeah. Right. Well, yeah. And just just wait, wait till it's off and go look at the meter and see if it's moving. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Right. A lot no, of new investors really don't even, yeah, they just assume that it's okay. Mm -hmm. And tenants, if they have a, a drip that's coming down pretty hard, they, they just don't turn it in. No, they don't tell you, especially, you know, especially in the, in the, you know, C, C properties. That's, that's. Oh, yeah. How it works. Yes. Yeah. If you're um, master metered, that, that. Oh can yeah. Be, Forget <laughs> about it. Yeah. It'll, it'll kill you. And, and, and yeah. very, very important. So, so let's segue into tech for a minute. Um, you know, what are you guys seeing um, as, as resources for, you know, not just, not just acquisitions, well, really just uh, in, investors in general, okay, between property management, between, you know, acquisitions, you know, what, what, what solutions uh, are you seeing come, come to fruition here that, that are, you know, really positive um, uh, innovations in this, in this multifamily space? It's, uh, you know, there's a lot of, of good companies out there that are getting, you know, they're making it more reasonable to, to really get your properties leased, you know, get them out there. Apartments.com is doing a great job. Um, hot pads. And there's a number of them. Zillow, I guess, too. Um, but, you know, there's, as far as, uh, I think you're going to see some consolidation there because there's just too damn many places to go. Mm -hmm. But um, as far as the putting some of the, uh, valuations on some of these properties i think that you're finding some of the uh, some of the companies that are what company are you using for to help which uh, well i use costar quite a bit for valuations but we uh, i mean i i do uh costar gives us analytics across the nation that are pretty good right. yeah, right. we use them as well mm -hmm. stuff, but, yeah so i mean um, there's a great way to put you, you could go on there and really get a true value for your mm -hmm. asset yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think with also with some of the tech stuff that, you know, one of the key things for any property, any property owner should have is a professional property management software. Right. Um, it, and, and in the past it was either very difficult to use or they were geared more for the larger property owners. Um, right. And nowadays you're starting to see some that are charging by the unit and, and mm -hmm. letting a small property owner go in for uh, relatively low cost and having uh, the technology to be able to keep track of everything um, in a professional platform. And more importantly, it also then it makes it a little bit more efficient when it comes to tax time for your accountants and everything sure. else. Um, so, you know, and, and it's surprising, um, even to this day, we still see people that work on ledgers. Oh, I know. <laughs> Handwritten right. ledgers. And, and it's, uh, I, I don't see how they really can identify a problem coming up ahead of time. I mean, uh, the software and the technology that's out there today um, for that sort of, uh, it, it, it's life-saving. I mean, I, I remember having to do it on Excel spreadsheets back in the 90s. Right. Sure, um, sure. I remember, I remember before Excel. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, so, so, so are you guys uh, utilizing any of the smart technology as far as, you know, locks, locking, lighting, any of that stuff yet? Or is that? Not yet, but I'm looking at some stuff right now. That's pretty impressive. I right. mean, I that's think one of the neatest things that we, uh, I mean, we're, we're all about also being as efficient and green as possible. Right. And, uh, you know, a lot of the stuff right now, as far as cost wise, like for instance, you know, LED lights have been really popular to cut back right. on, on uh, your expenses, but the cost to put them in hasn't outweighed the cost differential for a fluorescent type fixture. Right. Um, those are coming down though dramatically pretty quickly. And I think within the next year or two, we're going to see them a lot more accessible to the everyday person. Uh, but when we start looking at some other savings, you know, you have uh, a lot of smart technology where, um, you know, some of the new, newest things are, that I've seen out there are uh, you have key card systems. One, you don't have to rekey. Oh, yeah, which is uh, such a huge expense a, and, and, a, and a pain in the ass to keep track of and everything else. So that's ab awesome. Absolutely. And a person's less likely to lose a key card as well, um, right. especially when they know that it's a $50 charge to replace it. Right. Um, and then, uh, you, nor do you have to call a locksmith out if they do lose it. You can actually just do it and go in there, re you know, have it set up. Um, but also, one of the new systems I saw that's pretty amazing is you can actually tie in the key, especially if you're in a master meter system, 
you can tie the key card into the person there so that if let's say you're in an all bills paid property, um, you know, if all bills are paid, the tenant doesn't care if the AC is on 24 hours a day and when they're at work or the lights are on or anything else. Right. However, the new key card systems actually you when you first walk in the door after you unlock it, you have to put the key card in. Yeah, you put it in the holder and that turns holder, everything back on. Yeah, that turns everything some, on. Some yeah. of the green hotels have that. Oh. I was just I was just in LA for my live event and in the hotel there you had to have a, okay. a key card to, to 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 turn on the Hyatt has that. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And that dramatically reduces your cost. Sure. I mean, and it, it also holds the uh, tenant a little bit more accountable for actually using and, and you know. Uh, Love it. Yeah, no, that's that's amazing stuff. Well, so I know you guys uh, have a tech solution. It's therrd.com if you guys want to check it out. Um, listen, um, uh, let, let, I have one last thing I'd like to ask, and that is tell us a, tell us about a war story and how – you know, I think we've kind of we've kind of danced around it with solutions, but but t t tell us, you know, tell my listeners when you really got your butt kicked and what the lesson was. Why don't you go ahead? Tell okay. about incident reporting. Well, um, that's, that's a good yeah, one. that's a good one actually. Uh, and it really hurt. You know, when we first moved into, uh, uh, you know, and this goes back to what you were saying, know your market. Right. Um, and uh, we first started investing in uh, the Dallas submarket. And uh, of course, we were, you know, we fell in love with the BC assets. We bought into a B, uh, B asset uh, uh, property, B minus, perhaps. That's being generous. Um, and uh, <laughs> yeah. it, what ended up happening is, you know, in Dallas, and whoever did this, I swear if I ever find out the landlord that started this, I, I, I will string him up, as they say in Texas. Uh, but they started doing move in specials where $99 moves you in. And that was your oh, God, first yeah. month rent, as well as your oh yeah, uh, as well as your security deposit. Well, it's not just it's, it, 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 it it's the craziest thing in the world. But what ended up happening, especially in Dallas, is it created professional renters. And and coming from Los Angeles, we never saw this. Right. So we bought an asset, and then month over month, we kept seeing a high turnover where people were moving in, then moving out, moving in, then moving out. And, uh, you know, we were asking, we, we came down and we sat down and said uh, to the manager, what's going on? Why are you not running credit? Why are these people moving out? And they said, well, they're just skipping out. They just use the move-in special. And then when the rent, full rent comes due, um, right before we fi have to file eviction, they move out. And well, they, I, let you, they let you start the eviction and run it all the way through exactly, before they move out. Exactly. That's when it's really painful. Absolutely. And, uh, and I... I said, well, why aren't you running background checks, credit reports? And she said, we absolutely are. <laughs> and she showed them to me. Wow. And of course, the, you know, the, like, like I said before, if you start an eviction, um, and, but it doesn't go to court, the first thing they ask you when you get to court, are they still in possession? Mm -hmm. If you answer no, which you know, you're supposed to answer truthfully, they say case dismissed. Right. There's no judgment, no judgment, no record. So that's what these people were doing. They were just oh, taking advantage nice. of the system, moving. They were literally moving next door. Wow. And uh, I, we came back and said, well, what are you guys doing to prevent this? And to the management company and the manager, and they said, well, we have a list of people. We all know how property management works. One, first of all, that's illegal. Secondly, um, that list probably went into the circular file when they got back to the office. Uh, no one's going to go through a whole bunch of, paperwork to see, oh, is that person on it, that person on it. So, um, you know, what we ended up doing was uh, cre actually creating a database um, and what we call our incident reporting database, um, which is an FCRA compliant database that's free for all landlords. Wow. And uh, it keeps track of lease violations, not just people who skip, but any kind of lease violation that's uh, monetary or non-monetary, including crime on property. And uh, we actually created that trying to help the community and get the community a little is this, bit better. Is this specific to California or, or where? Nationwide. Nationwide. We have over 500,000 names now. Uh, wow. And this is, this, is at the, is, this is at your website, the RRD.com? Yeah, it is. It's under the incident reporting. Okay. And it, was, it was just a point, you know, we built that out of frustration because, you know, the property was at 98% occupancy down to like 80 six, I think it was Wow. In or 30 days because those people moved wow. in and then you can see them at the property next door. <coughs> wow. Right. No, that's painful. Uh, that's painful. It's, yeah. It's, it's, it was frustration. So, but 
you know, I, I think the lesson we learned from that was really understand your market, what's going in there. And, you know, especially if you're going into a new market and even if you have a management company, you still have to be kind of hands on. Sure. Um, no, you, you, you have, have to be hands on period. Yeah. yeah. You yeah. have to, you have to stay involved, you know, yeah, cause you know, cause if we didn't uh, you know, if we weren't involved in actually going over the rent and this was a, you know, moderate size property it was, I think uh, 72 units. Mm -hmm. um, and if we weren't, actually looking at the rent rolls monthly and comparing them, we would never would have caught anything like this. Wow. So really be involved, go, you know, don't uh, uh, be involved with the property, be involved with the property management. Don't just trust things that they're, because they didn't know any better. So they just did it the way they did it. And right. trust your instincts, go with what you think you can protect, potentially solve or correct or, or do. And, mm -hmm. You know, ultimately, it boils down to, um, you know, it, the instant reporting doesn't mean you shouldn't rent to somebody, but don't give them a free $99 move-in special if they've done it. If oh, they've good God, no. You, you, help you want to touch on something. Help us if that ever happens again. I well, want to touch on something on the incident reporting, though. Yeah. That is, we are, that's FCRA. We are a credit reporting agency. We're classified as that. It's not a blacklist. If, if you're in, no, our, I, I caught system. that Fair Credit Reporting Act compliant. Got it. Yeah. If yeah. you're if you're found to be in our system, and you you can contact us, and we will do due diligence to see if in fact you're supposed to be in the system or not. Because the people that have put this individual in have got to have documentation proving that this has been done on the property. Okay. Thank you for that qualifier. And yeah, sounds, it's like, not a sounds, black like, sounds like a great report. I'm out of time, guys. I really appreciate you right. being on the show and you've right. added a ton Thank of value. You. And it's absolutely been my pleasure to have you uh, add, add all the value that you have. So thank, thank you. you. Thanks for having thank us. You. Absolutely. Thank you for listening to the Lifetime Cash Flow through Real Estate Investing Podcast. If you've enjoyed the show, please take a minute to visit iTunes and leave your comments. For more resources or to connect with us further, please visit our website at rodcleef.com. Tune in next week for our next show. Any investment opportunities mentioned on this podcast are limited to accredited investors. Any investments will only be made with proper disclosure and subscription documentation and subject to all applicable laws.